the easy, simple answer is no, they don't. Uh, and I think that goes against w what we see in sort of normal practice patterns in industrialized countries where they, they doctors tell people and kids get information on the internet that, you know, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna have surgery, and my knee's gonna be 100%, and I'm gonna go back to play sports. They respond differently because some people are just innate neuromuscular geniuses. You know, they, they don't depend on their ACLs, I guess, to the degree that, that many of us do. So there are just people who are, who are better at it. Yes, we can. We have a, a battery of tests that we do with our patients once they have a quiet knee. So once their knee has no swelling, full range of motion, and they have good quad control and they can hop around a little bit without pain, then, um, then we test them. We do four single leg hop tests, a so single, single hop, triple hop, crossover hop for distance, and then a time six meter hop. We also, um, as I said, test their quad strength and we give them a couple of questionnaires, a, a global question of how well is your knee doing compared to how you did before, surgery, before your injury, and then one on an ADL scale. Again, patient self-report. And we want them to score 80% on the hops and the, and the uh, ADL questionnaire and 60% on the, on the global rating, which is you know, still pretty high level compared to a pretty high level for most of these folks. And if they pass those, then we consider them a potential coper. Yes, we can turn people into copers. Um, we, we just published a paper, Louise Toma, my postdoc, was the lead author in American Journal of Sports Medicine just about a month ago, that, um, where, we, where we showed that, that we can take about half of the non-copers and with a 10-session neuromuscular training program, we use a type of uh, disturbed um, translations of, of um, the, the ground <clears throat> called perturbation training. But it, I, would, I would assume that any kind of intensive neuromuscular, progressive neuromuscular training would do the same thing. And about half of the non-copers over that 10 sessions converted to potential copers and then ultimately went on to have the same outcomes as those people who were kind of born potential copers. The people with poor neuromuscular control, so those people who remain non-copers even after extensive training, seem to have poorer outcomes even, <clears throat> even with surgery. They just, they, just don't do, they just don't do as well. And it could just be that they, they're those folks who walk, end up walking stiffly and never really come back from that, that injury. It's a, I, th I think we can pick out, you know, if, if we have enough pre-op rehab, enough time, I think we can predict the people who will do poorly. Well, the answer to can they is yes. The answer to should they is probably if our goal is long-term knee health, no. Because the, there is an, the association with, with osteoarthritis is really going back to jumping, pivoting, and cutting sports. And, you know, we have 26 year olds, some people are, you know, 10 or 15 years after an ACL injury, the, they're, they're 30 years old and they have knee OA. So, it's, an ACL injury is a devastating injury to, uh, to most folks and it, it, shouldn't, it shouldn't just be thought of as, as a bump in the road. You know, I'm going to have surgery, my knee's going to be 100%, I'm going to go back to play in six months and everything's going to be great. This, it, that's just not the way it works.